Good morning everyone and welcome to our Gibbon Habitat here at Paradise Wildlife Park. My name is James and I'm one of the keepers on the Primate and Small Mammal team and we're shortly about to be joined by our pair of Law Gibbons. Now our Law Gibbons are just slowly making their way down. We have our female Shani who's just coming along the window here and then we have Raf, our young male who is probably somewhere up near the top. Now these are what known as Law Gibbons or also known as the White Handy Gibbon um, and these are one of a total of about 17 species found uh, across the world. Um, we have two species here at the park. We have the law gibbons obviously right here and we also have our white cheek gibbons uh, next door. Now we got, so we've got the pair here, we've got Raf and Shani. Uh, Raf was born here, he's approaching six years old, he's six years old later this year. Um, and Shani is uh, just over nine years old um, and she arrived here in September. She came here as part of the European breeding program um, so to be paired up with Raf. Raf isn't quite old enough yet, he's still got a little bit of uh, maturing to do. But hopefully in the near future these guys will kind of pair up and hopefully we'll have some more baby gibbons in the future. Um, now they're just talking into their lunch right now. Uh, we've given them some variety of enrichment as well to make it sort of interesting for them to make them think. Um, a lot of people confuse these guys for monkeys um, but gibbons are actually a species of ape. Now the easiest way of telling these apart is uh, all apes lack a tail whereas all monkeys have one. Um, so apes include gorillas, chimpanzees, orangutans, ourselves, uh, bonobos um, and all the gibbon species. Now the gibbon species are different in one way in that they're known as lesser apes. They are much smaller, um, much more agile um, than something like a gorilla or orangutan um, and so they're, they're distinct in that way. Now gibbons are also quite unique, uh, quite special in that they are only found in Asia. Um, law gibbons in particular are found um, throughout quite a wide range in, in Asia, um, places like Thailand, Malaysia, um, parts of India, um, even down throughout Indonesia as well. Um, of all the given species, they have the, they have the widest north to south range um, of all the different species. Um, so Raf's just uh, being very cheeky there, trying to steal some Chinese food. Now, so they're just tucking into their food right now. Um, here at the park, we feed them a, a variety of vegetables um, and some special primate pellet as well. Uh, so we've got some pepper just there for lunch as well, as well as some lettuce um, and some other things. In the wild, gibbons are omnivorous, um, so they will often take uh, insects or their invertebrates, um, occasionally the odds that maybe a bird or an um, egg if they can come across it. Uh, but most of their diet is made up of vegeta uh, vegetation, so that includes uh, plants, fruits, um, leaves, um, tree bark, um, a nice wide sort of variety of their food. Um, we don't feed any fruit here at the park though, um, and that's for a very particular reason. Um, any fruit that we'd be able to provide for them from sort of our supermarkets is actually uh, far too high in sugar. It doesn't resemble any of the fruit that they would find out in their natural habitat out in Asia. Um, so we don't feed it to them, otherwise it would just be giving them chocolate and sweets uh, throughout every single day, which, just like us, isn't particularly healthy for them. And they can suffer from such similar to diet issues as we do as humans. And we feed them at least uh, three times a day as well. This is their second feed. They'll be doing at least another one later on as well. Um, and they also have access to plenty of fresh leaves so they can help themselves to uh, fresh browse. Now, unfortunately, like most uh, a lot of other primates and most other animals in Southeast Asia, gibbons are under a lot of threat out in the wild. Um, law gibbons um, in particular are um, classed as endangered, um, which means their numbers aren't doing very well at all um, across their entire habitat. Um, and they're at risk for a lot of different reasons. Um, one of the uh, main factors uh, for gibbons, like most a lot of other animals in Southeast Asia, is habitat destruction. Um, large swathes of forest have been chopped down every single day to, uh, for all sorts of reasons, for logging, for plants, for other crops, for human sort of habitation, towns and villages are growing and things like that. Um, and that obviously is destroying the habitat for the gibbons to live, it's making it hard for gibbons to come into contact with each other to breed, um, and it's reducing all their food as well. Um, now, Kind of a quite a sort of shocking stat about that is we have uh, one of our white cheek gibbons um, is about 46 years old. Now in those 46 years that new to our white cheek gibbon has been on this earth, gibbon habitat across the across the globe has reduced by 80 percent. And as it's reduced, that means there is no more habitat for those gibbons to live, and that is an absolutely astounding figure. Now, unfortunately, uh, there's not a, there's a, such a quite a, a lot of kind of factors involved in trying to help preserve that. We here, I said, as part of the European Breeding Programme, we're trying to maintain a nice healthy population of animals outside of the wild, so the animals aren't going to go extinct forever. Um, but we also work with a lot of uh, organisations around the world who help try and preserve areas of the forest, and that's not always quite an easy thing to do. One of the big factors for habitat destruction for gibbons, um, most of other Southeast Asian animals, is the palm oil trade. Uh, palm oil is a, a crop that is found in all sorts of products that we consume, foods, cosmetics, all sorts. 
and it's not something as simple as just sort of stopping the, uh, the palm oil plantations um, and the forest being recovered and um, there has to be some sort of sustainability to that as well so it's a, it's a very complex issue and it's definitely worth kind of looking more into um, but zoos not just themselves but zoos around the world are looking at it um, to try and help with that issue now another big factor with primates is the pet trade now you may notice i'm actually still outside of the habitat right now and that is because gibbons can be extremely dangerous uh, we here at the park class our gibbons the same as our lions and our tigers in terms of how dangerous they can be um, an adult gibbon is several times stronger than an adult human um, and as you might be able to see they are incredibly quick and incredibly agile so they don't make good pets however when they're young um, people often will want them in their homes um, because they're very cute um, and unfortunately to get a baby gibbon you have to kill an adult gibbon um, and then as the baby grows up becomes mature it can't it, the owners often kind of get sick of it because it's getting too unpredictable getting too dangerous and will often either abandon it or worse. Um, so the illegal pet trade is of course another factor that's affecting these guys um, out in the wild. Um, tied into that as well, a big problem with gibbons is the what we call the uh, beach photo props. Um, if you go to beaches in that part of the world you'll often find um, a person with a young baby gibbon um, often on a kind of a lead or a leash and they'll go and put it on somebody and take a photo and then sell that, sell that photo to them. Um, and again, as with the pet trade, that isn't obviously ideal. That's very poor for the gibbons who have obviously been taken away from their, their families and their parents um, and then will be sort of discarded as they get older and more unpredictable. Um, and again, that is something that conservation organisations and zoos are stuff trying to fight around the world um, because it's something that is still going on today. Now, as you've seen, some more gibbons are moving around now. Uh, gibbons are incredibly agile. Um, then most of their entire lives are spent in the treetops. So they live in the very thick forest throughout uh, Southeast Asia. Um, and they do some le method of locomotion called brachiation, which means they use their entire body weight as a pendulum and they'll swing from tree to tree, from branch to branch, using those arms just to help sort of propel them through the forest. Now, like I said, they're incredibly agile. They can kind of turn very quickly and their shoulder joints, their elbow joints, their wrist joints are all specially adapted. It means they can kind of turn really quickly, really um, efficiently and also makes it nice and safe, especially if you're traveling through the treetops at an incredibly high speed. It means you can get away from predators very quickly or you can kind of go and access food um, much quicker as well. So you can see they're still showing a lot of interest in their enrichment. It's just something simple. We've just got some paper bags. We put their food inside. But it means they have to think about how they get them. Like, like all primates, gibbons are very intelligent. They like to sort of problem solve. They like to work things out. Um, so we often try and offer, them, offer their food in different ways. Whether it be we hide in different things, we offer it in puzzle feeders, um, we'll tie it up. Just something simple today, like we put it in, some in paper bags so they actually have to work out how to get to it. And how do we manage the gibbons here at Paradise? So, as I said, these are incredibly dangerous. So we have to kind of treat these guys with a lot of respect. Um, we don't go in with them at all, um, unlike some of our other animals here, which we are safe to do so. With our gibbons, we have to say treat them almost like as our lions and our tigers. We have to make sure they're locked into the house before we go into their enclosure. And um, we'll go in and we'll clean up. We'll put fresh food out for them. We'll do it, clean the windows, and then we'll let the gibbons back out. And then when the gibbons are out, we can lock them out of the house and we can go inside and clean. Um, it's far too much risky to actually go in and try, even if we had some food, obviously it's a nice positive thing. But again, they are too unpredictable and too dangerous for us to risk doing that. Um, so they are very intelligent. Um, and we do often, to help with that kind of, sort of shifting between inside and outside of their habitats, we have to get them trained. So the gibbons, as I said, using their intelligence, um, are very accustomed to going and sort of stationing on a set area of their, of their fence line, um, where they'll get a reward. Uh, it's usually some uh, peanuts or something like that. Um, and then they know when they go sit there, they'll get their reward. We can close the door. They know nothing scary is going to happen. And means we can uh, move them back and forth with relative ease. It also means we can get a nice close look at them. Um, so for example, we think someone might have an injury or they're not behaving right, uh, as, you, as they would normally. We can get uh, nice and close to them and get a good look uh, without obviously putting ourselves at, ri at risk or putting the gibbons in it under any undue stress. Now, as I said, these are our law gibbons. Um, we also have our white cheek gibbons. So if you want to follow me, we'll go and quickly have a look at them as no visit to paradise is complete without visiting Ethan on male white cheek gibbon. Now, Ethan is just right here. He's come to say hello to us. So as you might be able to see, he's obviously a different colour than our law gibbons. Uh, white cheek gibbons, as the name implies, have a nice sort of white tufts of fur on the side of their face. The males are this jet black colour as well. Now, I don't think we can see any of our females just yet, but... Um, Male and female white cheek gibbons are completely different colours. The females tend to be a bit more of a blonde brown colour, whereas the males are black. Now, unfortunately, uh, the white cheek gibbons are 
Been a bit troublesome today, so we can't get into their outside enclosure to clean the windows. But Ethan loves to come, like I say, as you can see right there, Ethan loves to come and sort of investigate uh, the public as they come and sort of see them at the enclosure. He is um, very kind of fond, very curious of people, so that's why he is showing, um, he's very curious about us on the camera right now. Right, thanks for tuning in everyone. Um, remember, stay home, stay safe. Um, I hope you kind of tune in for the rest of the lives that we've got coming up in the next few weeks. Thank you. So we hope you enjoyed that guys uh, if you'd like to donate to our fundraiser please visit our facebook fundraiser um if you enjoyed the video feel free to send some facebook stars uh, to help with donations have a great day